Let's talk about three useful functions that Python provides and that are very often used along with Lambda functions. First, we have the map function. So, this is the function map. This function takes another function and the sequence as arguments and applies the function to all the elements of the sequence, returning a list as the result. The function taken as the first argument may be a previously defined function or a lambda function. So let's try this first using a predefined function that we will create. So let's define a function that takes a parameter and multiplies by 10. Let's say def product 10 of a colon and just return a times 10. Okay, now let's create a list. Let's say list1 equals range of 10. Let's say list1. Okay. And now let's use the map function to apply the product10 function on each element in the list, in list1. So, map, open parentheses. First you type in the function name, so product10. And then the sequence name, list1. Great, just what we intended. Now let's do the same thing using a lambda function. So, map, open and close parentheses. The first argument is the function. In our case, a lambda function this time. So, lambda, a, a times, sorry, a times 10. Okay, and close this in another set of parentheses, and then comma and the list we want to apply the function on. So, the result is the same in a single line of code. Notice that the lambda function body may or may not be enclosed by parentheses inside map. You should better use parentheses though for better readability. Remember, readability is one of Python's main advantages. The filter function, so filter, also takes a function and a sequence as arguments and its role is to extract all the elements in that sequence for which the function returns true. Let's go ahead and use a lambda function and the same list one. So let's say filter, the first argument is the function, so lambda a, let's say a greater than 5. And the second parameter is the sequence, so list1. Close parentheses. And this is pretty intuitive, I think. The lambda function returns true if, applied on list1, it finds elements greater than 5. Then the filter function returns a list composed of those elements only. Finally, the reduce function is a bit more complex. Reduce... Uh, also takes as arguments a function, us usually a lambda function, and a sequence. Now let me explain how it works. Let's say you have the following code. Reduce my func, comma, and then the sequence. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. A simple list. Now what reduce does is it takes the first two elements of the sequence, so 1 and 2, and feeds them as arguments to the myfunc function. Then it takes the result returned by that function and the third element in the sequence, in our case 3, and then feeds those two as arguments to myfunc, and so on until the sequence is exhausted. The final result will be a single value, not a list of values as we've seen with map and filter. Let's see a couple of examples using the same list one. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's say reduce. The first argument is the function, so lambda a and b. Let's take two arguments. And a times b as the operation. And apply this on list1. Hmm, wait, that's not the best example because list1 is range of 10, remember. And the first element of the list generated by range of 10 is 0. Thus, the final result, having multiplication inside the function, will be 0. 
let's try the same with addition instead of multiplication. So let's say a plus b. Okay, so we got 45 as the final result. This is actually the sum of all elements in list 1, right? We can confirm this with the sum function. Let's see a sum on list 1. Okay, indeed, 45 it is. We can apply the same principle for subtraction. So, let's say a minus b. And this time we get minus 45, which is also correct. Let's use the reduce function with a string being the sequence and add a space in between every two letters of the string using the lambda function. So let's say reduce lambda a and b colon and let's concatenate a plus a space character and plus b comma and now the string we want to apply the function on, let's say networking, and that's it. Great, we got what we wanted. So remember these three functions that Python provides to help you deal more easily with different tasks. They may come in handy someday.